What up? It's your boy DJ PK, and we are back with another installment of Eastward Part 2. Uh, but before we get into that, I thought we could uh, check out the Book of Judges, uh, because who doesn't love a good judge? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, let's go ahead and let's see. Before we start uh, with the book, let's read the commentary at the, the beginning. So, for the title, the book bears the fitting name Judges, which refers to unique leaders God gave to his people for preservation against their enemies. The Hebrew title means Deliverers, or Saviors, as well as Judges. Twelve such judges arose before Samuel, then Eli, and Samuel raised the court to four, the court, the count to fourteen. God Himself is a higher judge. Judges span. Judges spans about three hundred and fifty years from Joshua's conquest, that would be circa thirteen ninety eight B.C., until Eli and Samuel judged prior to the establishment of the monarchy, which would be circa ten forty three B.C. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's also check out the author and date. No author is named in the book, but the Jewish Talmud identifies Samuel, a key prophet who lived at the time these events took place and could have personally summed up the era. The time was earlier than David's capture of Jerusalem, circa 1004 BC, since Jebusites still controlled the site. Also, the writer deals with a time before a king ruled. Since Saul began his reign in circa 1043 BC, a time shortly after his rule began, it's probably when Judges was written. Okay. So basically, uh, he's talking about this was the time period. Um, so, like, Israel was split up between the 12 tribes, and uh, this was before they had selected a king to rule them which you know was kind of a stupid idea if you know the history <laughs> um but they were kind of wiling out and stuff and so uh they had some issues and so judges uh were i i, I guess they arose <laughs> in in the time of need and so yeah but uh we'll save that for now uh, let's start reading chapter 1 a little bit, and then we'll read more next time. <clears throat> so, chapter 1. Now it came about after the death of Joshua that the sons of Israel inquired of the Lord, saying, Who shall go up first for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? The Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have given the land into his hand. Then Judah said to Simeon his brother, Come up with me into the territory allotted me, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and in turn will go with you into the territory allotted to you. So Simeon went with him. Judah went up, and the Lord gave the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hands, and they defeated ten thousand men at Bezek. They found uh, Adonai Bezek and Bezek and fought against him, and they defeated the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Adonai Bezek fled, and they pursued him, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and big toes. Adonai Bezek said, Seventy, king, Seventy kings with their thumbs and their big toes cut off, used to gather up scraps under my table. As I have done, so God has repaid me. So they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died there. Interesting. Then the sons of Judah fought against Jerusalem, and captured it, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and set the city on fire. Afterward, the sons of Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites living in the hill country and in the Negev and in the lowland. So Judah went against the Canaanites who lived in Hebron. Now the name of Hebron formerly was Kiriath Arba. And they struck Sheshai and Ahiman and Talmai. Talmai. Okay, that will be the end for now. 
but it's it's interesting. But let's go ahead and transition, and we'll talk more about it. Transition. I said transition. So you know, there are people who um, they have complaints. Ignorantly so, uh, they suggest, you know, that, uh, you know, like, oh, the Judeo-Christian God is the, uh, the God of war and genocide, and, <laughs> and it's because they clear, they don't study the history. They read passages like that, like, oh, he's so barbaric, but they, they conveniently miss out on the, the point where, um, the, these king, these king's wickedness was repaid back to them. It literally said the the king is quoted in saying that I did this to other people and I've been repaid. I've been repaid. So it's kind of like these people were wretched people to begin with, and so and a lot of these people came out to war against to war against them, and so it was self-defense in many times so yeah you just got to read more about it and you'll you'll read how wicked these people were i already talked to them i already talked to them i talked to the toilet people what is this oh nothing oh i didn't even know those passage what rocket cemetery Is this another door? What? Oh! So it's an actual cemetery, but there's a rocket inside? Did they die on the rocket? Oh, I was, I thought, at first I thought he was licking the shovel. I was like, you disgusting maggot, but he's like a frog, he's eating flies. I mean, he's still a disgusting maggot, but, um... It's a lot worse than licking a grave keeper's shovel. Now, isn't this a treat? Someone with the flesh still on their bones. Care to listen to the story of an old race like me? Sure thing. How splendid. My normal audience has been pretty dead lately. Ahem. <clears throat> Long, long ago, all of humanity lived within grand houses of glass, and every person kept within their own mysterious box. Within these boxes existed limitless worlds and countless stories. Friends, family. Yes, even those they loved could be found within these boxes. One day, however, the boxes shattered. And in an instant, all those many worlds disappeared. Panicked, everyone raced from their homes, wondering what on earth could have happened. It was then that they noticed. Their houses of glass were just like the boxes, as dark and as black as night. Okay. Clearly, he's referring to televisions <laughs> or computers or something. Can I interact with this rocket? Now, I'm. this makes me think of... Uh, of uh, Fallout 3, you had, uh, what was it, like the worshippers of Adam or something, like the, the cult of Adam or something, they worshipped the, I forget, I thought that they worshipped the atomic bomb or something like that, but didn't they end up launching into space or something like that, that was like one of the missions, you could, you could choose to help them and and launch them into space, <laughs> I think. Oh, dude. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I can't remember, though. Doesn't it, like, does it crash? I don't remember. If it doesn't, that would be a pretty interesting spin-off. Like, if they did Fallout in space. I know they did the Starfall or whatever, but that's not a Fallout game. It might as well be, but you know, you know what I'm saying. It'd be cool if they did like a more advanced one. 
where like you go into space and there's like feral ghouls. Every day it's the same dang thing. Ain't nothing to do down here but sleep. Maybe I'll get lucky and dream me up a sun today. He must be Japanese because his name's Tanaka. Also, uh, yeah, I just remembered. His reference to the TVs also could be uh, a strong allusion to uh, Earthbound 3. Uh, in Mother 3, Earthbound 3, um, which is really hypocritical. Um, Itoi-san, uh, Itoi, uh, Shigesato Itoi, he was... Uh, as a plot device, he had, like, essentially TVs being placed in people's houses by the the pig gang or whatever. I forget what they're called. Um, I, I still haven't beaten three yet. I've started it multiple times, and I got really far in one, and then I got distracted. It's not my favorite in the series. I don't know why anyone suggests that three is their favorite, because... It might be a little more advanced because of the technology that it came out on, which this is a more advanced version of that, essentially. Um, but I thought it was very detached from the previous ones. Like, Earthbound Zero and Earthbound One were much more cohesive as, as a group. Uh, and if I'm honest, it's the same game. Earthbound Zero and Earthbound One are the exact same game, uh, pretty much. Like, if you break it down into, like, the concept and similar locations, some locations have the same exact name, some locations are have very s similar designs, um, the characters are similarly designed, uh, so I personally think that they made Earthbound Zero, I call it Earthbound Zero, that's what we used to call it, because we never got it. Um, Earthbound Zero uh, was for the, the Nintendo, and I think they later released essentially a very similar game on the Super Nintendo, which personally is pretty lazy. I prefer the Super Nintendo version, though. I think it's a better... Uh, it's a much better story than the original, I think. John! Looking suave today, as always. In a hurry again today? I did expect no less from Potcroc Isles, number one digger. Box. Oh, I'm opening it. Oh yeah, found 50 salt. How salty. Okay, well... I guess I've exhausted this. <laughs> but, yeah, I really think that, uh... Earthbound 2 is the better one. Water. That's cool. This, this sink right here is very Japanese style, by the way. Um, many schools, or at least old schools, I haven't been into a, a new one. So I assume they, ha I assume they have continued the style. But in some old schools, they have these exact same sinks. I don't know which way to go. I don't want to miss something. <laughs> oh, my anxiety. Pop, pop, fizz, fizz, baby. Well, hey, John. What are you doing here? You better be scooting along if you don't want to be late. Don't tell me how to live my life. Good one. Nope. Oh, can I go in here? Oh, is this an arcade? Is that my boss? Captain Tiger. Well, well, well. If it isn't John. Ha! <laughs> Vying for a drink this early, are we? 
You're no better than Chuck. Don't come running to me if you pass out drunk down in the site. Are you gonna block the door so I can't go in, you jerk? Am I going the right direction? What the crap? Oh, it's a gro grocery store. But yeah, isn't it weird that Mother 2, or Earthbound, is better than the first one? Like, that's just usually not the case. It's usually one is the best and it just goes downhill from there. Oh, do you have to have coins to play these games? Oh, it's Gacha. Which, again, is very Japanese. I mean, I know we have these machines in, in uh, America, but... Uh, I don't have a memory card. Yeah, oh my gosh. John, we need a memory card to play Earthborn. Clearly a reference to Earthbound. Though, this is the funny part. If you look on top of the machine, that's a Sega Dreamcast on top of it. talk to this dragon masked child. Oh, it's a demon mask. Okay. <clears throat> You're one of them diggers, aren't you? You best be careful not to go up, up, up. Else disaster's gonna come down, down, down. Hello, grocery isn't open yet. Come back once you're off work. Okay. Super cold beer. Cold cuts of pizza. Interesting. Let's go in here. Let's see what's in here. But yeah, on to, or I should say back to, um, Mother 3. I thought it, no, I didn't want to do that. Um, I thought it was a fun game. I still need to beat it. I intend to go back and force myself to beat it. With my uh, ADD, I often hop to different games, which is kind of nice because I, oh, stop right there. The mayor's taking his rest. Stop. <laughs> okay. Can I go up? Um. What the? Is this a secret passage? Yes, it is. Yes. I love games that uh, reward exploration. Oh, I got tokens so I can go play. Uh, I can play Gotcha. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah, baby girl. What's wrong with me? Um, it's a good game, but it's definitely my least favorite. Um, just because it's it's so quirky, like needlessly so. Like again, I mentioned in the previous video about the whole like save frogs it's like it's so weird and like they have well, i guess both of them have dinosaurs but one is like kind of like the uh lo paradise lost kind of idea they're inside the earth long time since i've seen your face around here john it's not often you do your shopping here anyway what can i get you today Treasure radar. Don't even... I do have the salt. Okay, let's go for it. Apparently, that's the only thing I can buy here. Do I have to equip it? Interesting. So, uh, apparently, my weapon is a fry pan, which also is a complete shout-out to Earthbound, because Paula's main weapon was a uh, fry pan. Milk shop. It's a dairy shop, I guess. Miruku Miyazaki. 
Okay, well, Miruku is Japanese for milk, so his name is Milk Miyazaki, essentially. If it isn't Little Sam, made any new friends lately? Still want to go to the world above? <laughs> oh, hold on. Wait. Okay, because I skipped this one because I was worried it would go... Okay. What's the north? The crap? Those moving umbrellas? Is this a school? It's a principal. Oh, I guess it's just wind blowing them. No, I keep on pressing the L button. Or the L trigger. So, I like how they give you direction, um, I also like how they allow you to just f free roam to your heart's, uh, heart's con content, <laughs> um, but, hot crab, um, I will say that it seems a bit much though like it would be nice if there's a little more barriers to prevent you from seeing th too much that you don't need to see at the beginning there ain't nothing in this world I can't fix name's Mason Mason the fixer you got something for me to fix nope oh robot well if it isn't John what brings you to the Sunnyside Ranch? If it's the dig site you're looking for, you went in the exact opposite direction. Well, that's nice that they... Uh, I did not mean to do that. Um, it's nice that they... Yeah. That they do offer some direction, but... Ranch has been producing less and less lately. Can't even remember last time I got paid in full. Diggers make decent money, I bet. Maybe I should become a digger, too. Well, um, buddy, if there's no, um, farmers, then, uh, we don't eat. <laughs> like, don't, don't be short-sighted here. You can't eat rocks. I bet that this is blocked off. I bet, I bet later this will open up and I can go east. But yeah, in other parts of, like, Mother 3, it's just kind of weird. A lot of people, uh, a lot of fans of the series keep on saying, like, you know, bring Mother 3 to the U.S., localize it, localize it. It's not going to happen for a while. And even if it does, I have a feeling that people are going to be pretty irritated. Um, one of the key, comp like, story components in... Mother 3 involves transvestites, so... Which sounds really weird, and it's... Really... It is really weird, and it's really unnecessary, to be honest. What is that? Oh, that's the treasure radar. I was like, why does my character have a cell phone? Oh, yeah, right here. Okay, cool. Like, my even my controller is, like, slightly pulsating with the treasure radar. That's cool. Um, like, if you want to put, like, that trans stuff in your games or whatever, that's your prerogative. You know, you do you. I think it's wrong. I think the Bible says it's wrong. I, I don't think, I know it says it's wrong, um, but again, whatever 
sinful acts consenting adults which wish to partake in uh, they are freely they they can freely choose to participate uh, but they also should be aware that there are consequences for sinning against me and in yourself so but for example if you if you steal there's jail time what is this Treasure! <clears throat> but again, I, I think it's really inappropriate for, um, for him to have put that into a game which pretty much 100% is marketed towards children and young people. Um, I think that's unnecessary and it doesn't need to be in there. It's just, it's kind of weird, like, the, they're supposed to, they're called my gypsies or whatever in the translation. I, I'm, I didn't play it in Japanese, so I don't know what they call them in Japanese. Maybe it's the same. Um, but they're like, these like, eff, like very effeminate, like, androgynous men, essentially, where they like dress like women and they have like really effeminate pink hairstyles, um, and like wear like clearly wear makeup and stuff like that so it's like again i it's just i don't know why this is, was a necessary key component to a game that was marketed towards children um they even like in the game behave behave very like effeminately and homosexually so it's like leave, leave kids alone <laughs> That's that's what I think. Just leave them alone. Leave their parents to to um, raise them and to to guide them morally. It's not your responsibility. And, and in fact, for you to interfere with that is irresponsible. Um, but <clears throat> I turn this on. Well, I guess we've explored everything fully. Also, like, the storyline in 3 is just really bizarre. Um, it's, supp it's supposed to be loosely connected to the first, or for, to part 2, you know, Earthbound. Oh, come on, don't be so stingy. I'm only borrowing it two days tops. I'll give it back as soon as I finish it. You say that every time, yet somehow I've never gotten anything back. That's, well... I don't even know how to pronounce that. What is that? Ch Chag? Chage? Well, well, well. John's here. Mr. Punctuality as always. Your watch must have been carved by the god of time himself. And you're looking as adorable as always, Sam. Do you still remember what I taught you? Of course. Over pit, under rock, bury treasure round the clock. In the mine, rocks go blast, safety first or you won't last. Gotta dig, gotta dig, dig to make those riches flow. Oh, that was cute. Bravo. You'll make an excellent digger one day, Sam. She sure will. Even better than John, I'd say. Dang! We've got a problem. A big problem. S -s -s Slugs! John, thank God you're here. Come with me. We're going to smack some slugs around, baby. Now wait a god darn minute. You shouldn't be running off all pell-mell like little Sammy. It's dangerous in there. You should stay right here with your uncle Ch Ch Chag. We'll protect you from them slugs. But, but I'm fine. A very good point. Sam, would you like to hear about when the mayor went up against the evil dragon? Not that one again. 
I personally would enjoy Sam to join join the battle with me. I wonder if they'll stop me from leaving. Is that a toilet? <laughs> it's a toilet. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to decorate this. Oh, it's a save fridge. Yes, thank you. Oh, why are they asking some like weird esoteric stuff? If you were to get someone else's memory, would you be you or them? <laughs> we hear other people's memories all the time, you weirdos. It doesn't change me. Very earthbound having a room with lockers that you can go through. But yeah, the the story of uh, of Earthbound Three is very like weird in my opinion. Um, like the main villain from the second one, the slugs are in the cave to the west. There you are, John. The slugs are in the cave to the west, and you. Go find the key to the storeroom. We'll need the bombs in there to take care of the slug nest. What are you waiting for? Old Chuckles is already headed for the storeroom. I'll be uh, right behind you. Sure you will. So, I, I guess I shouldn't say the main villain. <laughs> Okay, so this is an action RPG. Okay. Get up out of my face. Can I go in here? What? Who is it? John, is that you? No, it must be John. John, don't open the door. Those slugs are sapping our electricity. Unless you take care of them, we won't be able to turn the lights back on. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to lie. I would love to see an Earthbound game like this. No, no lie. Oh, okay, so I can actually target in 360 that's cool yeah like I really like turn-based games honestly but uh oh so I can't affect that uh, I guess they'll come back out okay uh, but no honestly I'd love to see an earthbound game like this oh crap I just shocked the snot on myself yeah d K O. I'm gonna whomp ya. Boom! Quadruple kill! No, I want this treasure. Okay. Oh, you jerk. Let me get the chest. This guy always interfering in my plans. Okay. Oh, I guess I gotta come in here and get the bombs or something. John, you find the bombs in the gunpowder closet. You can use them to bomb those suckers' nests. Key required? Okay. I got it. I got it, buddy. Yeah. Take. Take him out. Oh, I thought that was the door. Is this it? Is he gonna stop me again?
okay, I got it, bro. It would have been nice if they would have put that at the beginning. Huh. No, I'm gonna shock myself if I do that. for my sound effects. <laughs> and I'm the only one. Oh yeah. Look at that magic key. A bomb. You can find it in your weapons menu. Haha. -ha. Oh, that's my backpack. I got ten bombs apparently. Oh, that's right, I can have a, multiple ones equipped. I like that. I like that. That's right, suck up. Are there more? Are you gonna give me crap for going up here again? Okay, no. Okay, cool. Oh, I thought there was treasure up here. That's why he was stopping me. Because he knew I wasn't gonna be able to go up that way. Okay. Oh, here, let me read that for y'all. There's even more of them slugs past that door over there. Watch out for the glowing nests, though. That's where the real sons of bees come from. It's a shame that they felt the need to make this more adult, as especially as a love letter to the Earthbound series. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I really, I'm really digging the the action RPG aspect of this though. This is fun. You give me that heart, baby. Get your glowing booty out of here. Get out of there. Yeah, worth it. <clears throat> but yeah, I was talking about the... Uh, the odd... Um, connection between Earthbound 2 and 3. Don't... Don't... Don't eat me! <laughs> well... Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? I thought you were one of those carnivorous critters. It's me, Quack Dr. Boguda. Okay. No, no, no. I've got to stop calling myself that. I'll stop getting any patience. By the way, did you know that those slugs secrete a most peculiar gel? They do, and it can even be used as an adhesive of sorts to heal wounds. That's why I'm here to get my hands on some of that gel. Though, how was I to know how crazy those mucilaginous mites would be? I had no choice but to hide myself away in here. Did you, don't go! Please don't go! You're that... that... yes... You're that remarkable digger, aren't you? John, was it? I 
heard that you were the first one to dig yourself up a person. Yes, yes, uh, here. Take this, would you? Did I get a hole? <laughs> I mean, it was... Oh, nice, dude. I got a hot dog. Yes. I may not have been able to find any gel, but that doesn't mean I'm useless. Give that thing a try. Oh, my gosh. Give that hot dog a try. Huh? What? What was that sound all about? Um... Yeah, I, was, I, I saw those bottles. I wondered what was up. Um, so, in Earthbound 2, I, you know, in case you haven't played it, I don't want to spoil the the end. But there is a there's a primary boss and a secondary boss, like main boss, and uh, the one of the bosses. Yeah. Uh, shows up in part three. Well, part three, the world doesn't even seem connected to the other one. I don't know if there's, like, some level of, like, it's a different dimension, if, like, many, many years have passed, or what. But it is loosely connected. Oh, crap. And as I mentioned, um... They, t you know, there's an intro introduction of these TVs. They don't call them TVs, though, but... Oh, crap. Oh! Um, worth it. Um, there's an introduction of TVs, but in Earthbound 2, there are clearly already TVs. Um, so, it doesn't make much sense. It's... In order for them to be literally connected, there would have to be some sort of, like, post-apocalyptic cataclysm that happened after Part 2. For, for it to make any sense outside of it being an alternate dimension. Or, like, a, I guess even a different planet. But... Everything's a bit different. There's kind of, like, no real strong connections to the the old series which is kind of sad in my opinion and the characters are like really really odd John s s slugs a whole mess of them okay what the you big lout what'd you just do Huh? Didn't you say there were slugs inside? What a what a smelly idiot. <laughs> oh, crap. I'm gonna have to hurry. Oh crap. I'm running out of time. Yeah. With gusto, baby. Woo! That's right. Yeah. You don't know me. You don't know me. You can catch these hands. Yeah, that's right. That's right, suckers. Woo! <clears throat> Slugs down. Which, another, again, another parallel. Slugs are enemies... Common enemy, I guess, kind of common enemies. I think you enter, you encounter them more than once in Earthmound. You think John's gonna be all right? Uh, it's a hard call. Guy's really gotten himself neck high in a caca pie this time. Yeah, thanks to you. Hey, idiots. <laughs> oh, John. <laughs> We were just, uh, talking about how to rescue you. 
John! Yep, I thought it was her. The mayor! The mayor's on his way, John! Oh, sounds like it's time to start school. Well, crap! Shift's over and I've got a whole lot of nothing. Mayor's not gonna be happy. Uh, uh, I'm getting out of here! Hey, hey, wait! Come on, John! Mayor catches you and there'll be hell to pay! Oh, uh, one other thing. So you heard that chime. Well, it also, it also, uh, okay, maybe I've got full bombs. Oh, okay. Um, it also signifies the end of the work day, I believe. Is it the work day or just the end of school? I think it's both, maybe. But there are times, like, where I'm at the park in Japan, and it's about, like, I think 5 p.m. is when it chimes. And you can hear it, like, everywhere. It's ridiculous. The mayor's gonna kill me. Don't concern me. Traitor. What did you say? Hush. All of y'all. Here's, uh, he's here. Let me save. Come on. All right, you good-for-nothings. Let me see if you've lived up to your name today. Empty. And another one. Empty. You really are good-for-nothings. All of you. And you! Yeah, I'm talking to you! Why is this kid still here? You think this is a playground? She belongs in school! The tuition fee will come out of your paycheck, of course. Did you hear that, John? I get to go to school! He gone? Woo! Thought that old fogey was gonna dock my pay again. Scared us half to death. At least our salaries made it out unscathed. Ooh, sand root. Sand root. Is that rupee? Or sand. Sand droop? Sand root. Times two. Okay, whatever that is. It looks like a fruit. Dang, sand roops again? Can't I get paid in cash for once? I've eaten nothing but sand roops all month. Well, least things worked out. Gotta hand it to you, John. You really do get us out of some binds. Guess you're off to school tomorrow. Ain't that right, little Sammy? Gonna seem pretty round he pretty empty round here without you. I'll be back, I promise. Don't you go playing hooky now. You gotta listen to that teacher of yours. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Don't you? I know. We mean it. Don't, don't want you getting shipped off to Karen on us. Ain't that right, John? Ah, uh, John, uh, that pan of yours. Huh? Oh. No! John, your pan, it's broken. Mason take a gander at it. Yeah, ain't nothing that old codger can't fix. You can't find that Jan at the Sunnyside Ranch. See if he can't tune that puppy up for you. Okay, oh, thank the Lord. By the way, uh, if you are unfamiliar with why I'm using uh, this Southern accent, uh, this is the way that uh, kind of farm people and Southern people talk, so, in America, if you're unfamiliar. All right. There you have it. Let's go ahead and transition back. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a like, share, subscribe. Um, and as always, love, peace, and Afro-Grease. And I'm out.